Tech Cocktail Sessions, educational and inspirational talks from experienced startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. So, our first guest is Sarah Evans. Uh, she is a loca local Las uh, Vegas I should, uh, person. She's not originally from here, but uh, who is anyway these days? Um, and she's got some interesting stuff she's been up to, so let's bring up Sarah. Come on up here. Uh, wh wh which is your better... Actually, I have a better side than the other, but... I, I, what's I don't have a better side, but I can only move my neck to the left right now. Oh, <laughs> wait, so... The decision so do you want to sit over here? You can only move to the left. Yeah, I threw out my neck somewhere. Oh, shoot. Well, thanks for coming. Anyway. Yeah, you know, that's this? how much I love you. <laughs> I can okay. awkwardly move. Like so that's better this. for you then. I shouldn't yeah. go over there. Is it there. creepy? No, it's perfect. Like it's like a robot. Yeah, I'll kind of do the same Just and do no the one will notice. As we, as yeah. Yes, Frank. Yes. You have to talk robotic too. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> this is going nowhere fast. I know. So, um, so what? First off, let's give a little bit of background. What you've been up to here and uh, what what you're kind of what? So people have a context of like what you do. Like who am I? What do what I do? What are you up to? Well, I'm from Chicago. Shy town. Yeah. Got some other Chicagoans here. From a here. really small town. Who knows LaSalle, Peru? Anyone in here? Yeah, it's not where they have llamas, yes. just so you know. Yes. It's not the no, same there place. There are some places. There might be that some, have llamas, but not the other places. There's a lot like of llamas. South America. Right. Um, and my husband and I, I, ha I, there was a startup out here that I mm -hmm. came out to work with, and we took this huge risk. I had mm -hmm. my own company doing digital consulting for several years, mm -hmm. and we're like, why not? uproot our family, you quit your job, bring our almost <laughs> one-year-old and move to the desert. Like, that that sounds, sounds like an amazing idea. I know. <laughs> the grandparents were very angry, but... Oh, I'm sure. Um, it was something... It, my husband and I are a team, and he knew it was something I really um, wanted to do. Number one, because we wanted our lifestyle to change. I was traveling a lot, mm -hmm. had a young child, still have a young child. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to travel less. I wanted to be home. I wanted to put all my effort into one client. So came out here with them and it didn't turn out the way we had hoped and so started my company back up, but we found that we really fell in love with Las Vegas. In fact, it helped me continue my journey where I was mm -hmm. doing digital consulting. Um, I wasn't sure what my fit in was with that space. We had kind of started to grow an agency and I realized I didn't like managing people. That really wasn't what I was all about. And I discovered I was really a digital correspondent for brands. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just an ambassador, but I could create a team of people to come in and be like a personal newsroom for a brand Very cool. um, around big events, live events, big moments in time. Mm -hmm. So it helped me really solidify where I wanted to be in a specific space and, and really set me on the journey that I'd begun back in college where I was trying to decide between broadcast journalism and communications and now I just created a new role that... You created that existed. and that's, that's what you love. I mean, that's what you were made to do. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, you were. As you I talk do. like a robot. <laughs> I do love yeah, to do I that. Do, I love it so much. I throw it on my back doing it. Um, <laughs> I was chasing my three-year, almost three-year-old oh, today. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, we were wearing Superman costumes and socks. For Why didn't you wear a Superman costume? Well, I felt like I should change. We were at another three-year-old birthday party. Oh, that would have so, been amazing. Um, I yeah. would have put, put on a costume too. That would have been Thanks. cool. Um, okay, so I know that you're you're big on personal mission, and we talk about that actually in the book. Um, the book that's right over there. Um, <laughs> if you haven't picked it up yet, um, it. Oh, you, yeah, you turned that way. Thank you. I mean, it's like I just I shift. Reminds oh, me. Oh, I might not get. Kind of reminds me of Derek Zoolander. Um, <laughs> he can only go left. I can't. I'm an ambi turner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never thought I would bring that up today. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so you have a personal mission. Um, you obviously have one that's kind of more of you know how you live your life, but then there's also one that's kind of associated with business too. Can you t kind of share your approach there? Sure. So I created this life mission statement. Thank you so much for caring about it. No one really ever asks <laughs> about that. But my very first job, my very first mentor asked if I had a life mission statement, and she went through this amazing exercise with our team, and it's. Interesting because in 10 plus years, I have never changed it. Um, mm -hmm. It has remained the same. And the very first part is I run unabashedly free through life um, because so much of the early part of my life was filled with fear and anxiety. And um, fear became such a driver for everything that I realized when I was really scared about something that it was probably something I really needed to do and take a chance on. So it's because mm -hmm. I've changed. I guess I just changed what fear was. So now when I used to be scared to do something and I didn't do it, now when I'm scared, I'm like, oh, yeah, I have to do it. Oh, jeez. Um, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> Evil Knievel? Yeah. Like? Yeah. Um, so it just pops in your mind and then you go do it. That, what, what are some of the things uh, you've been up to? 
I did skydiving that came out of that, <laughs> moving to Vegas, yeah, yeah. <laughs> starting my own business. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't think about anything. Just and, uh, have sit, a child. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of fear. But just things like yeah. that, things, big life moments that are right. really scary. And sometimes when that fear can just prevent you from ever getting to it. Mm -hmm. um, like we were really scared to have a child, and we mm -hmm. did. I'm like, what? This is awesome. Right. Like, so you should, got through it. Yeah, got through it. Okay. Three years in. <laughs> what about, um, per, so that's personal, that's how you live, and then there's like probably a business kind of mission as well. It all it stems from the same th thing. So it's I run unabashedly free through life. Um, I believe in the unexpected. I'm totally blanking on it right now. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. No, no, no. We can, we'll get the book um, and then we but can read it. I, it it's ends with there. I live. Yeah. So it all just, it all drives both personal and professional. I, yeah. I do know it. I no, no, it's hard. I'll tweet I mean, it. It's okay. You can tweet it later. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's okay. Although I did. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's talk about. Um, so you're, you talked about how you kind of got it and created your own role. Um, that's not easy. You know, that's that's scary too. Um, maybe talk a little bit about how you came to that, the the ability that to do that. Like it's not easy to dive off that diving board. Um, it wasn't. It was really scary because even though I had my own business, there was definitely a solid business plan and just doing digital consultancy and mm -hmm. taking on social for people. Um, but I wasn't yeah. feeling fulfilled and it comes like yeah. much like we've heard from the other speakers it's that personal drive mm -hmm. and a lot of brands when they were hiring me they're like well are you going to tweet about me are you going to post about me and I realized <laughs> that they wanted to leverage some of my mouthpiece some mm -hmm. of my brand so I thought how do I I do that in a way that is both professional and rewarding mm -hmm. and can pay and so when I decided to make the specific switch to digital corresponding I was really nervous because now I have honed in like right. now I've got a thing I've got a title before I was like I own a company. I do a bunch of stuff I, yeah, I do stuff yeah, yeah you know it's not really specific mm -hmm. um, and luckily there are some really cool brands that have said you know we really like this structure we like this we've got a need to post content online we don't always want it just coming from our our executives and our brand mouthpiece and we want to brand ourselves a certain way so we, they like us to come in and produce for them because now they're not locked into branding guidelines. Mm -hmm. They don't have to run through chains of command to Right, they to put it on you to yeah. figure out how to like, do it and figure then figure this out. Right. We, we just did some work with Cisco and it was really cool mm -hmm. because one of their the brand, not the singer. Oh well yes. <laughs> both. <laughs> the brand, yeah. the technology, internet of everything. Yes. Uh, and one of their executives saw one of the videos that my team and I had produced and they were like, I really like this new direction we're going. We're like, that's not it. Mm -hmm. This was just something that this team produced. Mm -hmm. But they liked it so much now they're talking about doing an entire video series oh, along cool. the same um, themes that we put together because it was something new, it was something different, but mm -hmm. they're so locked into their, their side of things mm -hmm. that it was something different bringing someone new in to both produce content to share on their social channels and interact with their executives in a different way. Um, in fact, kind of funny story, but don't tweet this. Okay. I think. I won't. Yeah, probably not because I'd like to have them as a client. Okay. Again. Don't tell us um, who it is then. Acme? No, I mean, it's Cisco. Oh, oh Cisco. <laughs> oh, okay. We already know. Cat's out well, of the it's, bag. It's funny when, if you have a PR background, I have a PR background. You mm -hmm. always brief your executives before they're going to meet with someone, before they're going to inter interview. Right. What are they going to talk about? Mm -hmm. And I showed up for my first interview, and I've got my big glasses on. And, like, mm -hmm. I like them. Ripped up jeans. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I really need help seeing. Mm -hmm. And They do, like seem to do the trick? Crazy, yeah. Okay, good. A, you know, crazy jacket. And they were like, oh, my God. We need to pat. We need to brief Pat Asura, this lady who's coming to interview him. Like they were, uh, I think, a little taken of aback you? with my look. Yes, because they're used to suit and tie, uh, um, like news channel yeah, right. coming in and, and doing the interview, and I really mm -hmm. shocked them. But they ended up. <laughs> it was the most shared content that they had during that wow, show. So, that's awesome. um, I don't even know where I'm going with that. <laughs> Hopefully, that okay. answered the question. No, it did. Uh, okay, so you also um, you mentioned already that you have a son. Or you didn't mention that. I just said that. I do have a son. I said I he's th or is that a three-year-old? Three yeah. So how do you balance that, too? That's another. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, I was late getting here because my right. husband got home from work a little late. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how we always balance that. Mm -hmm. um, I constantly struggle and feel mom guilt. I, I'm back traveling again because um, that's what oh. I do for my my clients. Because uh, you weren't for a while once you, yeah, know, once you first got here. when we first came here. So I'm traveling again. The first year of his life, he traveled everywhere with me. He flew for free. So I'd bring wow. a nanny or a grandma. Mm -hmm. um, TMI, I was nursing him. So I was like, I don't want to yeah. pump and yeah. all that crazy stuff. So I brought him with me. Mm -hmm. um, but now we ha he's old enough that we do talk about things. Like when mommy's going for a trip, this is her business. This is what she mm -hmm. does for a living. But then when I'm back, we get special mommy and me time. Um, I'm traveling next week. So today he had his best friend's turned three, so I shut down the business, you know, <laughs> um, to take him and dress up like Superman. That's fun, and yeah. um, tomorrow, he's not 
going to school daycare, but Monday he goes back and then I travel. So mm -hmm. we've got a really unique balance. Mm -hmm. um, and outside of that, I'm also a wife. So then I've got time with my husband. So right. I always tell my husband, I always feel like one part is faltering. Like either business is going really well, like the wife part's going really well, the mom part's <laughs> going well. I haven't figured out the a juggle. mix. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we talk, we talk a lot. Mm -hmm. um, communication. We email a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we Snapchat. We FaceTime. Mm -hmm. I mean, my son is of the generation now. Like we FaceTime, mm -hmm. so we get to see each other. We've got. We always do the sign language. We take pictures back and forth oh. uh, when I'm traveling. We just have little. Things. Our family is different. You that's leverage. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Let's talk about that a little bit with the, your digital correspondence mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Like, what are some of the things you're seeing? Like, you're. What are, I mean, you're using video a lot. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that you use to kind of get the message out? So it depends. One of the things when I come in as a digital correspondent yeah. is even though I'm creating the content, I want the brand to be able to own the content. Okay. If they say, we don't want you to share any of it, which hasn't happened, yeah. um, they could own it and take it. We give them all the, the B-roll. We mm -hmm. come up with an editorial calendar for them. We're giving them a lot of tools and resources. Yeah. So we're using whatever networks that their customers are most popular on. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also leveraging mine. So that can be... It's usually always forward facing. We're not doing a lot of private messaging campaigns or anything at this right. point in time, like with a Snapchat or. Yeah. Um, so we're using your basics with your right. Instagram, Google Plus, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, cool. and producing for those. And then their personal entities. We're always driving people back to their website or their blog. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets this mic next is going to get pink lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I'm like That's eating okay. it. Okay. Yeah. That's fun. It is. Who's next? <laughs> Andy White. <laughs> Andy, this color looks good on you. Don't yeah. tell your wife. Mm -hmm. She's right next to me. I know, it's fine. <laughs> she knows. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to share? Any uh, words of wisdom as mm -hmm. people are starting and running their own thing? Just that it's really scary. I think my father-in-law gave me the best advice. Um, I love my parents and my in-laws. I'm really lucky to like all of them. Mm -hmm. um, my father-in-law sat down with me. He's like, I know, I know you're really nervous. He said, but I promise you in six months, you're going to look back and wonder why you were so worried. And it's so true. And that's with everything I've done since. And my husband and I always use that, yeah. um, use that language. I just, I, I love that. We've got parents and my in-laws who are really supportive. Um, mm. Even when things were failing, we moved out here and things weren't going like we expected. Mm. Our, the parents would call and say, we're really proud of you guys for that's making great. things work. And mm -hmm. I need that. I'm the oldest child, so I really always want to make people proud. I want to make my parents proud. Right. So it's like they know it and get it. Right. So that support system is important. Mm -hmm. So I guess inherent in that is knowing what's important to you, what, what you need, even when things aren't going well, what you need to know that you can still do this. So you don't have to wave that white flag yet because we could have done that several times right. um, since I've started that. We could have gone back to Chicago. We could have mm -hmm. cut our losses. But mm -hmm. um, I, every time things get really dark, I think it sticks more months. Yeah. Then I'll look back and every time <laughs> it, it works itself out. That's great advice. Thanks. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Awkward turn. Yeah, awkward turn. Perfect. Okay, cool. All right, let's, let's hear it for Sarah. <laughs> and, um,